I want to start in chapter 2 and I want to read some things that I don't normally do because I want to make sure I get them just right. He goes to Jerusalem. And what I want to look at is the obstacles that he encounters. There are eight obstacles that he encounters that every one of them, if you ever build anything in your life, if you ever have to rebuild anything in your life, there are obstacles that will come against you. And I want to look at each one, and then I want to look at how he handled the obstacle. If you would like to read along with me, I'm in Nehemiah chapter 2. He's already talked to the king. He's already gone back to Jerusalem. I'm in verse 10. Now these guys, Sanballat, and Horonite and Tobiah, you see them all the way through. When they heard that someone had come back to help build the wall, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Why did it grieve them exceedingly? Because they had a different philosophy. They had a different religion from these people. And you need to understand that when you are trying to do God's work, when you are trying to rebuild the walls, there will always be people against you. That's just the way it's going to be. Because there are many people in this world that have different philosophies. They have different ideologies from what you have. And so they will look at things differently from you. One of the prevailing ideologies in this country today is humanism. That is the idea that man is the ruler of all things. There is nothing higher than man. You can go back to the Greeks were humanists. You can go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. When Satan said to Eve, Eat of this fruit and you shall be as God. And buddy, that is seductive. You shall be as God. And there are many people in this country that are their own gods. And so they have their own morality and they have their own ethics. And when you tell them this is wrong, they are against you, buddy, because they don't believe anything wrong. Another philosophy that is prevalent in this country is hedonism. And that is the idea of the worship of pleasure. And we have millions of people that just worship. Think they were put here just to see how much pleasure they can have in their life. You ever heard the phrase, go for the gusto? You only go around once. It doesn't get any better than this. That's all hedonistic, hedonistic phrases. Those are all from beer commercials, by the way. They are, every one of them. Old beer commercial. If it feels good, do it. Or Nike, just do it. Just do it. That's your morality. That's your ethics. If you want to do it, do it. And so when you come with a philosophy, with, a, uh, with ethics and a morality that says there are certain things you should not do, that has a framework, buddy, they're not going to like you for that. And so whether you talk about socialism, there's all sorts of things. Socialism... And there are lots of Christians that kind of buy into the socialism idea. But socialism breaks several of the Ten Commandments. First and foremost, it says, Thou shalt not steal. Well, you say, how does socialism steal? Through taxes. It steals stuff from people that are productive and gives it to people that are not productive. It also says, Thou shalt not covet. And socialism basically says it's all right to covet somebody else's stuff. And then you vote in people that will take their stuff and give it to you. All of these anti-godly philosophies that are prevalent in the world today. So do not be surprised when there are people in this world that are against you simply because you believe in the morals and ethics of Christianity. That's the only reason they need. Now, Look at what they did. Look at verse 12 if you have. And I arose in the night 
and I some few men with me, and I did not tell anybody. Listen, be careful who you tell your dreams to. Be careful who you tell your goals to, who you tell what you are about. You better be careful. It'll be on Facebook before you know it. I did not tell anyone what God had put in my heart to do. Neither was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night. That's the only time he could really go out in secret. And before I went before the dragon well and to the dung port and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down and the gates thereof, and they were consumed with fire. When you have different philosophies competing with you, when you have people telling you that they are against you simply because of who you are, he went and learned the facts. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. He went and learned for himself. If you have people against you, if you have philosophies against you, make sure you know the facts. Make sure you know and can give an account. 1 Peter 3.15 And be ready always to give an account of the reason that you believe and yet do it with meekness and in fear. 